Dental amalgam, and it's, by the way, dentists like to call it alloy because it makes it sound so much more stable. But dental amalgam is the biggest and the worst exposure to mercury that most Americans have in their lives. If that is true, then millions of people have needlessly suffered a plethora of ills for well over a century and didn't realize the true cause was all in their heads. I was about to film a demonstration that proved this beyond a shadow of a doubt. Dr. Roger Eichmann and Dr. David Kennedy set up a phosphorescent screen and light that would be sensitive to mercury vapor coming off the tooth if it was present after even the slightest stimulation. We had teeth with amalgam fillings that would be placed in water of just room temperature to represent saliva in the mouth. I did not truly believe mercury vapor would come off the tooth, or if it did, that the film camera would register it. I also had a video camera on hand to record this event. To my shock and horror, and as you can see, the 35 millimeter motion picture camera did register the mercury vapor coming off the tooth. This is the first time in history this has ever been captured on a film camera. To make certain that what you are seeing is mercury, we had on hand a special instrument called a Jerome Mercury Sniffer to measure the levels. Can I take them? 191. show that to me, please? 191, is that high? Uh, the closest the factory gets over 100 and evacuate. Oh boy, my gosh. Okay. Now, you think about Turn it. Turn off this, the light. This is room temperature, one, two, at least 50 years old. It's been, been degassing for years, and um, many people have a whole mouthful of them. Yeah. Now, just think what happens if you have half a dozen people in a uh, elevator, all degassing like this, uh, and it's degassing 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yeah. And your OSHA standards are based on a 40-hour week. Dr. Eichmann dipped his fingers in water to prove that this is not condensed water vapor. Put my fingers in it. Uh, it's, um, and if you notice, uh, my wet fingers have no gas coming off of it. It's not water vapor. I don't that, see anything, yeah. That, that you're seeing. Next, Dr. Kennedy set up on the counter an amalgam mixer, which dentists use in their office to mix the amalgam capsules. And after mixing, they're broken open to prepare to be placed inside a patient's mouth as the amalgam filling. The amalgam capsules are then lined up one by one on a shaker where they are shaken for a time. With an unsuspecting patient nearby, the capsules are then broken open just as any dentist or dental assistant will do. Will mercury vapor be released? Remember, this is common procedure and goes on each and every day all over the world in dental offices next to innocent patients. The images speak for themselves. For the American Dental Association to continue to insist that amalgams are safe would seem absurd. Turn on the light, can we see what we got? 252. Yikes, should we exit this? Are we getting poison in here? Yes, it's raised the room up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the doors are working in a dental office. The problem is now, if you go into a dental office to remove a silver filling and they cavalierly start putting a drill on, uh, this whole screen would turn black. Mm. Uh, you hit it with a high-speed uh, drill, and you're going to put mercury everywhere. And those very small cuttings of amalgam will go all over. You've got to use a, um, a rubber dam. You've got to use a high-speed evacuator to get all that out. And you never turn off your evacuator until the last piece is out of the mouth. Because as soon as you scratch on it, it's just like, like me scratching uh, that's the knife okay. on here. Uh, thank you. <laughs> it, um, uh, I think it's a crime what they're doing to their dental staff. Is it, it, The female is much more sensitive 
reproductive wise to mercury and as a result that causes not only infertility but it causes birth defects of course you get the usual denials but when you look at the scientific literature it is full of studies showing that exposure to mercury either from your teeth or from uh, working in a dental office will you know you saw the demonstration it, there's huge amounts of mercury in those offices they don't monitor that they don't warn the employees they don't give them adequate mask and protection and as a result, there's a tremendous amount of infertility in dental assistants. There's a documentary on it. It's about the Norwegian dental nurses and about their lives being devastated by their job when they were young girls. So I think it's a crime what they're doing to these young girls. I've had patients come in uh, from other dentists saying, gee, I, all I had was my teeth cleaned, and I feel lousy for days after that. Every time, how come? Well, they polish the teeth, they get a huge amount of mercury being released uh, for several days after that until you get a little bit of uh, corrosion over the top, which slows it down a little bit. Um, but the amount of, of mercury released is just phenomenal. And if they're sensitive to it, it'll put them over the edge. When I was in dental school, I was told that dentists were averaging their first heart attack by age 44. Our life expectancy was age 52. I personally related that to their use of mercury and amalgam fillings because it wasn't occurring in orthodontics and in, uh, in surgeons. I had made certain that Garrett was nowhere near this demonstration to ensure he did not inhale any mercury vapor. Yet that seemed absurd when considering that many people are walking around with amalgams in their mouths. Dr. Gerson was right all along. Dental health is paramount to healing from chronic disease. In Colorado Springs, Colorado, there is one renowned dentist who has spoken out about fluoride, dental amalgams, and even the dangers of root canals for decades. His name is Dr. Hal Huggins. But just before we were to meet him, Garrett fell into a depression. He couldn't seem to overcome the disturbing chemistry lesson about deadly methylmercury vapor that Dr. Roger Eichmann gave. This homeschool lesson had hit him hard. And then the cause of his sadness was revealed. The boy's parents had unwittingly allowed some dentist to stick the mercury inside his mouth too. He now saw himself as a biohazard. But the good news was that he was about to meet Dr. Hal Huggins, who would give him some reassuring direction. Well, most of the people I see who are having their amalgams removed have some sort of a dread disease. Uh, but you're interested in prevention? then you are one in a hundred who's in a very good position because prevention is a whole lot easier than correcting a problem after it's occurred. He asked how many dentists state that mercury fillings are safe. Well, that would be pretty close to 100% if they want to be in dentistry tomorrow because the Dental Association has certain rules and regulations that if a dentist is asked, is mercury toxic, and they say anything affirmative, they say, well, yes, it is. It's the most poisonous metal on the planet that's not, not radio radioactive. Uh, they're going to lose their license and be selling used cars the next day. So what they believe and what they can say, two different things. Then he wanted to know which dentists know how to remove fillings properly. Those people who go out and just have their fillings removed at random, uh, by actual measurement, 63% end up with an autoimmune disease within six months that they did not have before they had their amalgams removed. Dr. Huggins guided Garrett to a dentist that did know how to safely remove his filling. The boy remembered a question. He had asked Dr. Huggins about retaliation for speaking out. Yes, there have been a number of cases of retaliation. The first thing they did was put up an enormous amount of money to see to it my license was removed for refusing to place amalgam, for refusing to do root canals on patients and writing a book they didn't like. There have been personal things that have been done against me and my family which destroyed the family, the rest of it destroyed the business. They've de destroyed everything I had except the mortgage on my home. And for some reason or other, they did not want that. Garrett reasoned that life could have been so much easier for him if he had just kept quiet like most doctors do. So the question became, why put yourself through this? 
when you have seen the people that I have seen and you see that their life just has a few minutes, a few hours before it runs out and you see that that can be turned around and you see that years later these people do have a life, that's the payment that I get. That's why I keep doing what I'm doing. It was a refreshing ideological position that reminded Garrett of Dr. Gerson, but it still is David and Goliath. In this situation, the American Dental Association wields tremendous power and control over a dentist's life. And the dentist that performed the procedure of proper filling removal on Garrett was terrified of his identity being captured for this movie. Documents had to be signed, which meant that I was personally liable to him for the ruining of his career and income if I did film his face. Hearings on mercury fillings are now taking place in Washington, D.C. that hopefully will put an end to this amalgam disaster. It is estimated that there is 1,000 tons of mercury in the fillings of Americans at the moment. Incredibly, the FDA has never conducted an environmental assessment of the use of dental mercury amalgam as prescribed by law. It is very important for the orthodox people to keep uh, patients from coming to uh, alternative treatments because they work. People have been so brainwashed for so long. 